This is the true story of Torore and the Gospel of Luke. It tells of the power of God's word to change people's lives. In 1836, a young Māori girl called Torore lived with her family near Matamata in the Waikato area of the North Island of New Zealand. Her father's name was Ngākuku, and he was a tribal chief at the Pā, which was close to where the village of Wahoroa is today. From the Pa site, Torore could look across to the distant mountains called the Kaimai Range. On the far side of this range lies Tauranga and the Bay of Plenty. One day, some European missionaries came to Matamata and visited the Pa where Torore lived. They said they were Christians and wanted to start a school for the Māori people in the area. They said they would teach them about Jesus and how to read and write the Māori language. The missionaries were called Alfred and Charlotte Brown. They were pale-skinned and wore strange clothes. Torore and her people liked Mr and Mrs Brown and Torore asked her father if she could go to their school. He said yes and decided to go along himself. The Māori people helped Mr and Mrs Brown to build a house and a school. Soon the mission school was opened and teaching began. Men and women, as well as boys and girls, came from around the area to learn from Mr and Mrs Brown who were such nice, kind people. Everyone liked them. Charlotte Brown could read and write the Māori language and was able to teach the women and girls to do the same. She read to them from parts of the Bible which had just become available in Māori. Torore learned to read well and was one of the brightest of Mrs Brown's students. She loved to hear the story of Jesus, the only Son of God. She realised that he had come to save all who believe in him. Torore became a Christian too. So impressed were Alfred and Charlotte Brown with Ngākuku and his daughter Torore that they gave them a copy of Toronga Ruka, Luke's Gospel in the Māori language. Ngākuku wrote his name in the front of the Gospel of Luke but let Torore use it and read it as much as she wanted. Because Torore loved Jesus and his words which she could now read, she would sit and read the gospel story for hours to whoever would sit and listen. Ngākuku knew that his people were in danger from other Māori tribes who were raiding and looting in the Waikato area. He decided to take Torore and her small brother, together with 18 others, over the Kaimai range to Tauranga. There was a Christian mission house there and they would be safe. It would take two days to make the journey from the pa at Wahoroa to the mission house at Tauranga, so they said goodbye to the Browns and all their friends at Wahoroa and started on their journey. Late in the afternoon of the 18th of October 1836, the party of two adults and 19 children set up a camp for the night by the stream at the foot of the Wairiri Falls. Before they went to sleep that night, Torore read to everyone from Torongopai Aruka. Torore and the other campers were unaware that they were being followed by a group of warriors from the Ta'arawa tribe of Rotorua. These men watched from a distance and waited for Ngakuku and his people to go to sleep. 
Then, at about three o'clock in the morning, Uita and his four men crept into the camping area and began to steal things. One of them trod on a dry twig. A dog began to bark, and most of the campers woke up. Ngakuku shouted to all of them to run into the nearby bush for safety. They all escaped, except Tarore. She struggled with the robber called Uita, who was trying to take her precious Luke's gospel from her. She fought for her life with Uita and determined that he should not steal God's word from her. She had to give in as Uita struck her and killed her. The robbers quickly ran off into the darkness with what they had managed to steal. When Ngakuku and the others returned to the campfire, they found Torore lying dead on the ground. They were very sad and decided to return to Wahoroa. Ngakuku's people wanted Utu, revenge, but he said that was not God's way. Ngakuku wanted to give his daughter a Christian burial at the pa, so he carried her all the way back to where they had started from the day before. Meanwhile, Uita and his warriors returned to Rotorua. When they examined the things which they had stolen, they found Torongapaya Ruka, the little book which had Ngakuku's name in the front. They were unable to read, but there was a visitor at their village in Rotorua who was able to read the Māori language. His name was Ripaho, and he was from Otaki in the south. He had learned to read during his visit to the Bay of Islands and just happened to be staying in Rotorua as he journeyed home. Uita asked him to read, and as Ripaho did so, the robbers became very sad. The word of God was having an effect on their lives too. As they listened to God's word, they understood that they had sinned. When Ripaho returned to Otaki, he was a changed man. As he had read and re-read the Gospel of Luke in his own language, he was affected and gave his life to Jesus Christ. When he arrived at Kapiti Island, he told Tamehana and his cousin Tefifi about the Gospel of Luke which had changed his life. Tamehana was the son of the great chief Turoparaha who had warred against the South Island Māori people for so long. Tamehana and Tefifi obtained a copy of this life-changing message of God and set out in a canoe to the South Island. Starting in the Marlborough Sounds, they began a journey which was to last for almost a year and a half, reading and teaching to Rongapaya Ruka, the good news of Luke, to as many of the Māori people as they could. They travelled as far south as Stewart Island, and the word of God which they preached had a dramatic effect on all the people. Many, many Māori people confessed their sins and prayed that Jesus Christ would be their saviour too. In 1842, Bishop Selwyn visited the South Island of New Zealand and wrote in his journal that he found many Christians there, all because of God's word being read to them. Just like Torore, they had read and understood the truth of Christ's life, death and resurrection and the message of the cross. Today, more than 160 years after Torore's death, a painted monument at the former Pa site at Wahoroa remains and reminds us of a 12-year-old girl who learned to love the Lord through the reading of his holy word. Would you read and understand these life-changing words with their unchanging, life-saving message of salvation through the cross of Jesus? The cross on Torore's grave reminds us that Christ died for the sins of the whole world so that everyone who truly believes in him might have eternal life. 
the cross is empty because Christ rose from the dead and lives forevermore. His resurrection power is available to us to change us and raise us to everlasting life. The Bible is God's word for us today. Read it to be wise. Believe it to be safe. And live it to be holy.